Happy Thursday and happy Conflict Resolution Day. In celebration of this joyous holiday, you're a big dummy. Oh, that was that was just a joke. I'm, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Look, I, I even brought some news stories to show how bad I feel. Well, that conflict is resolved. I'm your host, Andrew, and this is Crypto Espresso, your teeny tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines. This is an extra big episode of Crypto Espresso, so prepare yourself. First up, some potentially good news for Voyager customers, or at least not as bad as feared. A new court filing suggests that customers will get 72% of their savings back if FTX's acquisition is approved. This figure could also increase further if ongoing efforts to recover funds from Three Arrows Capital are a success. Voyager crashed into bankruptcy after 3AC defaulted on a $660 million loan, with withdrawals abruptly suspended. Last month, FTX successfully bid $1.4 billion for the stricken firm's assets. A judge now says Voyager has the ability to abandon this deal if it ends up receiving a higher offer. But to complicate matters a bit more, the sale cannot be finalized until Voyager's bankruptcy payout plan has been approved, and that may not happen until December. A group of investors who lost everything when Luna and UST collapsed are trying to track down Do Kwan. The UST restitution group believes that he's in Dubai and they plan to travel there. Speaking to the FT, one member said, there's a 50-50 chance of getting him. The newspaper claims that this group has 4,400 members who comb through the internet for clues on his whereabouts. It's also been suggested he could be in Azerbaijan, Russia, Mauritius, or the Seychelles. On Discord, one said Quan's days are numbered. An enraged mob with torches and pitchforks certainly falls in line with Do Quan's reasoning for secrecy regarding his current location. Laura Shin, who interviewed him this week, agreed, saying, I'm sorry people, but this is totally not cool. What do they plan to do when they find him? WTF. It may only be a matter of time before Bitcoin starts outperforming most asset classes once again. This is according to Bloomberg Intelligence. Mike McGlone says Bitcoin is showing signs of bottoming out after managing to stay above $19,000 despite the headwinds facing the global economy. Overall, McGlone believes that Bitcoin may be in the early days of shifting to trade more like bonds and gold, rather than being correlated to stocks. He added, Bitcoin's definable diminishing supply is unprecedented on a global scale, and so prices should continue to rise over time unless something unlikely happens to reverse demand and adoption trends. And for you hodlers out there, a finder panel of 55 experts has projected Bitcoin will be worth $21,344 by the end of 2022 and $79,193 by 2025. Months after he was exposed in embarrassing secretly recorded videos, Kyle Roche has left his law firm. Roche Friedman will now just be known as Friedman Normand Friedland. Over the summer, CryptoLeaks claimed the law firm and Ava Labs were involved in an extraordinary secret pact that harms the crypto industry. In covert clips, Roche bragged that he sues half the companies in the industry. Though Roche claims the footage was taken out of context, he still withdrew from a number of class action lawsuits. But that wasn't enough and Roche Friedman was later ejected from a market manipulation suit against Bitfinex and Tether. In a statement, the company said, We wish Kyle the best in his future endeavors. Not exactly living up to their name, Unstoppable Domains has stopped offering .coin domains after a rather unfortunate and somewhat comedic oopsie. The company, best known for offering .crypto and .nft extensions, had failed to realize that a rival had begun offering .coin domains all the way back in 2014. In a new blog post, it admitted the decision to discontinue this product had been painful and vowed to make consumers whole. Unstoppable added, Naming collisions are dangerous for the Unstoppable community and for Web3 as a whole. Multiple versions of a top-level domain could cause chaos. Imagine sending Bitcoin to the wrong Nora.nft or connecting your wallet to Uniswap.crypto and getting a scammer's website instead of the real one. The Brazilian footballing legend Ronaldinho is being criticized after he announced that he was joining a crypto project. In an announcement to his 21 million followers on Twitter, the 42-year-old said he was delighted to be part of the World Cup Inu family. Ronaldinho's tweet, which probably wasn't written by him, was filled with much of the empty language you'd often encounter from a low-cap altcoin project. Despite this language, CoinMarketCap data shows that World Cup Inu rallied after Ronaldinho's tweet went live, surging by 38% in just 15 minutes. A little over 12 hours later, and it's now wiped out these gains. Some critics are questioning this altcoin's tokenomics, while others claim Ronaldinho may be in trouble because he didn't use the ad hashtag. And finally, a former executive at bankrupt Celsius Network has well and truly landed on his feet, securing a new role in the most unexpected of places. Aaron Yovine, who served as head of policy for the doomed crypto lender, has now assumed a similar position at JP Morgan Chase. The appointment is all the more surreal considering JP Morgan's CEO 
CEO, Jamie Dimon, recently told politicians that cryptocurrencies are nothing more than decentralized Ponzi schemes. Given Dimon's long-running and visceral hatred for cryptocurrencies, you might be wondering why JP Morgan is even hiring crypto specialists at all. But as a recent LinkedIn vacancy shows, Eovine isn't the only person being recruited from this nascent sector. It's hunting for highly skilled lawyers also. And we're on the hunt for coin market cappers, that's diehard fans of Crypto Espresso who without hesitation will like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and yes, even click on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. If so, your secret decoder ring is in the mail. Show your love or disdain for these longer episodes in the comments below because I read those comments and I shout out my favorites in future episodes. Someone who always remembers to drink their Ovaltine? Alex. Ask Alex in the description below for more info on today's headlines or crypto in general. Alex is also a great resource for all things Web3 and the Metaverse, and whew, that does it for today's news. It was a big one, so I gotta go gargle some salt water and give these vocal cords a break. Again, I've been your host, Andrew. These have been your headlines, and we'll see you all tomorrow for the sweetest day of the week, Friday.